So 1940s was a decade of unrest, struggle and hope. And there were a lot of incidents, great incidents happening during this period. So due to all these wartime expenditure, all these established studios ran into difficulties. Some folded quickly and others like Bombay Talkies managed to survive by renting out their studios to the new independent producers. And we see the collapse of the studios and which was accelerated by the demise or decline of the dominant figures. So uh, we had these dominant figures like Shandaram. And in the last class, we talked about the um, owner of um, Bombay Talkies. It was Himan Surai. With the death of these people, or uh, the um, Bombay Talkies and Prabha Talkies collapsed. And we see uh, an emergence of a new trend during this period. So there was this large inflow of cash from black marketeers and they uh, were actually eager to plow their money into films and all these new independent producers started entering the business of making movies. So this was actually a blow to the united cohesive system which was established by all these studios, mainly these three studios. And the government controlled all these scarcity materials and, and uh, all these new theatres, new producers brought about a new trend during 1940s. So, there was this oversupply of films and a scarcity of theatres. And we see an interesting fact here, which is still evident in Indian film industry, that all these with the oversupply of films and scarcity of theatres, all these distributors and exhibitors began to dictate terms to producers. So they kind of began to influence the kind of films that were being made. Exhibitors started identifying certain stars and certain kinds of songs and dances as crowd pleasers and demanded that producers deliver these features if they wish to have their new films screened. So you may know that it is still a, a unique feature of film industry where uh, when all these when a certain set set of film uh, uh, has been uh, become when it becomes crowd pleasers there is a general trend to imitate all those films and it started in 1940s so producers started understanding the market value of a star. So from then on we see all those all those films which were placed in uh, rural settings where romance blossomed. We see the stars singing soulful songs and which actually engendered a fan following among the audiences. So here we see the rise of staff. So you may have noted that till then, 1930s, we knew the films by the names of the directors. It was V. Shandaran's film, it was P. C. Barwa's film, it was Mehboob Khan's film. But from now on, we knew the films with the name of the stars. And you may know that it is still continuing. So 
they started promoting the beauty the talent and charisma of stars which was actually which actually became a commodity which actually became a com- commodity which attracted the audience to cinema in groups and we have the all these romantic stories with complicated family relationships which provided emotional tension highlighting stars songs dance and spectacle it became the order of the day so we see the indian films striking its winning formula the essential ingredients of indian film it is still the essential ingredients of indian films it is the combination of song dance spectacle and fantasy so this is known as the formula films it is also known by the name masala films so these are the masalas you still see in indian films so there will be songs there will be dance there will be spectacle and fantasy all those romantic stories and we see the stars dancing and we see the great spectacle so watching all those bollywood movies like uh, the movies of sanjay leela bansali it is something like a spectacle so it started you must understand it is not a recent phenomenon it it has a history way back to 1940s so along with that we see the uh, emergence of new directors like Vimal Roy, Guru Dutt, K. Abbas, etc. So this is 1940s. 1940s, in a nutshell, it is an age of unrest and struggle. We have this uh, uh, intense political activity happen during this period because of all these nationalist movements. And Uh, the, we see this strict censorship from the part of colonial government and how all these directors devised a method to circumvent this rule so they made they reintroduced the themes of mythology into their films and they it was something like as i said hani it was something like patriotism in disguise so as an indian we will understand the real theme of these movies how it tried to give out the um, idea of patriotism but to uh, a foreigner it will be just a mythological story so that is a major characteristics of the films during this period and later Uh, we talked about the decline of all the these studios and the emergence of new independent producers and distributors who started dictating terms to the directors and they identified some films as crowd pleasers some stars some on screen pairs as the hit the super hit pair and they wanted films based uh, made made with those stars so we see the rise of stars during this period along with that we see the formula comes into indian film that is the mixture of song dance spectacle and fantasy so this is the ingredient of these are the ingredients of indian film so i'm stopping my lecture on 1940s so i have mentioned some of the films if you get time you go to youtube watch all these films particularly please watch the song from kismat it is dur hato So thank you girls have a nice day